What's up everyone, it's Kenji here, and today I thought I'd go over 5 different career paths in the real estate industry. So for those that don't know, when I signed up for Cornell University, one of my concentrations was in real estate, and so this is a career path that I contemplated for myself, and a lot of my colleagues ended up working in the industry. So I'll do my best to try and explain these paths, and I'll rank each of them by difficulty, meaning how hard it is to get the job, work hours, so the work-life balance basically, and thirdly, the compensation. So let's get into it. Firstly, we have real estate investment banking, and this role has to do with providing debt or equity financing, so raising money for clients, and on the other hand with advisory services, so advising them on asset sales, or mergers or acquisitions as well. The clients here aren't individual homeowners or individual building owners, but instead they're entire companies, so it could be a company in the hotel space, like Marriott say, it could be one in the gaming space, not really like computer games, but rather casinos and things like that, as well as real estate investment trusts, which are basically a type of company that invests in real estate and they get certain tax breaks. Some of the major employers in this field include the big investment banks like JP Morgan, Bank of America, or Citibank as well. When it comes to the pay, as a first year analyst, which is the entry level position, you can expect to be earning over 100,000 as your base level salary, and on top of that you'll get a bonus, which obviously depends on your performance, as well as that of your team, but you can expect to earn around 150,000 fresh out of college. So for those reasons, for the pay, we'll give it a 5 star. That being said, the hours are particularly difficult, I'd say around 80 hours a week is what's common there, so obviously a lot more than your average job. So for that, for the work-life balance, we'll give it a 2 star. When it comes to recruiting, even though they do offer summer internships as well as full-time jobs, it is very competitive. Typically, you'll be a graduate or a student in one of the best universities in your country, you'll have relevant work experience, and maybe you've even networked with somebody in the industry, so trying to understand it better. So for those reasons, when it comes to difficulty to getting the job, we'll give it a 1 star as it's very hard to get in. Next up, we've got real estate private equity. And unlike in real estate investment banking, where you're primarily providing financing or advisory services, in private equity, you are actually acquiring that property and monitoring it. And I split this down into two subcategories, on the one hand, the real estate acquisition side, and on the other hand, the real estate asset management. So looking at the real estate acquisition side first, typically they raise money from outside investors and invest that money in trying to find an attractive property, looking for the right financing for it, so how much should you have in debt, how much is that debt going to cost, etc. And lastly, acquiring that property. These outside investors are usually the likes of pension funds, insurance companies, or endowment funds as well. Once the process is complete, you have the real estate asset management side, which is in charge of making sure they get a good return on the investment once it's been acquired. And they look for financial performance, as for the physical management of the property, so things like if they bought a hotel, say, the housekeeping, the maintenance, and all that, all that stuff, that would actually be outsourced to a third-party management company, so it wouldn't actually be the asset manager per se. The asset managers oversee the bigger picture, so trying to follow the business plan, and eventually selling the property for a return. Both of these roles do sometimes include in-person visits, so it's not just, say, number crunching on Excel. Some examples of big players in this field include the general private equity funds like Blackstone or KKR, as well as more real estate specific ones like Brookfield or LaSalle. When it comes to the compensation, it can reach around the 100,000 range, and it's usually slightly higher for the acquisition side compared to the asset management side, which might have a, say, 20% discount. So for those reasons, we'll give them a 4 star and a 3 star respectively. Alongside the compensation, you can expect the work hours to differ a bit as well. On the acquisition side, you can expect to work around 60 hours a week, while on the asset management side, it's more around 50. So we'll give them a 3 star and a 4 star respectively. Lastly, for breaking into this type of a role, the guidelines are not as clear as in real estate investment banking. For example, you can work as a real estate broker for a few years and eventually make it into private equity. Similarly, you can work at a bank and then make that switch, or like some of my friends have, just get in fresh out of college as well. That being said, for the acquisition side, it's slightly more prestigious, and so we'll give that a 2 star rating as it's harder, and on the other hand, for the asset management side, we'll give it a 3 star rating as it's slightly easier. Next up, we have Real Estate Broker, and this is actually what my friend Michael did as an intern before joining Tesla, which you can find the video on that somewhere up here. In this path, there's generally a split between residential and commercial spaces. When it comes to residential, it's more like individual condo units, homes, other things like that, where there might be a junior broker as well as a more senior one. And the junior one is mainly in task in charge of administrative tasks, showing around the property, sending emails, etc. On the other hand, there's commercial spaces which are just generally bigger. So it might be the likes of a warehouse, it might be a shopping mall, 
or entire building as well. And generally, there's going to be a junior broker within a small team. Because commercial spaces are bigger, usually a junior broker will do somewhat more sophisticated tasks like what might be financial modeling or deal facilitations as well. Some of the more well-known residential players include Keller Williams as well as Century 21. On the other hand, for the commercial side, these include CBRE as well as JLL. That being said, these big commercial players sometimes do have subsidiaries that do residential too. When it comes to the work-life balance, it's generally quite good. That's because it's fairly flexible in that you're the one that meets with the clients and chooses the timeframes for that. That said, it will obviously depend on the size of your team and how many clients they're taking on. But generally, a rough guide is around 45 hours a week. So for that, we'll give it five stars. Now let's get on to the pay and here's when it gets a bit tricky. Brokers operate on a eat what you kill basis, which basically means that they get commissions for each sale. And so the more they generate, basically the more they're gonna make. That's why it, the range here varies quite a lot. Typically, if you look online, it'll go anywhere from like 23,000 all the way to 700,000. And the median's around 175,000. That's obviously for more senior brokers. That's on the more commercial side, but on the residential side, it's usually slightly less than that at around say 70,000 or so. And so combining those two will give it around a three star rating for that. Looking at the recruitment difficulty, because it's such a relationship based job, there is a lot of networking involved in there. Also, unlike many of the other career paths that I've mentioned, this one does require a license. And so that's an extra requirement there. So overall, we'll give it a two stars when it comes to difficulty, as it is rather tricky. And the last career path we'll look at is real estate development. So what does a real estate developer do? In short, firstly, they need to find the financing from investors and lenders. On top of that, they need to find the property or the land that they're wanting, wanting to acquire. Hopefully acquire that, get the right zoning permits. And after that, oversee the whole development process. It is very much relationship based and there's a lot of parties involved. After all, you need to hire the architect, the engineer, interior designer, etc. Overall though, typically the actual developer will also put in some money himself or herself and on top of that there'll be the bigger portion from the investors. When it comes to the pay and the work-life balance, this isn't really a conventional job in that you show up and you earn a salary. Instead, it's a lot more entrepreneurial in that there's nothing guaranteed, but the potential upside is unlimited. That's why you hear of all of these real estate developer billionaires like Wang Jiangling, one of the richest men in China, Donald Bread, or even Donald Trump. So we'll put both the work-life balance as well as the pay at three stars, really because it could go either way. Some examples of the big name players include the Wanda Group, Irving Company, as well as the related companies. Looking at the difficulty, this type of a role doesn't really require any sort of a license or a particular degree, but generally it is common to have previous work experience in the industry. Overall though, because you don't really need permission from anyone to get started, I'd give it a four stars when it comes to recruitment difficulty. Obviously, this is just five different career paths. It's by no means a complete list. Do let me know in the comments though if you would like a part two. Also, if you're interested in seeing more videos about me, I recently partnered with Money Under 30, a finance publication, to create a series of videos on investing and the stock market. The content ranges from index funds to zero commission brokers and much more. They're all completely free and you can find them down in the description below. So feel free to check them out if you're interested. That's all for this one. Hit that like, hit that subscribe if you liked it, and I'll catch you in the next one.